All right. Good afternoon. I'm Eitan Bakshi, and I'm here to tell you about adaptive experimentation, a technology for combining machine learning and experiments to improve in products and optimize infrastructure. I'm going to start by telling you about the journey of our team. I joined Facebook because I was excited about improving decision making through data. After running experiments for more than five years at Facebook, I realized that there's tremendous value in testing many ideas in parallel, in utilizing machine learning to experiment smarter. This approach was so powerful that we decided to form a team dedicated to this methodology. Soon after we began, we realized that many teams had extremely large problem spaces. There might be something like hundreds of thousands or even an infinite number of possible solutions to these problems. After we figured out a method that would work for this, we needed to scale up the impact of our team by taking ourselves out of the loop. We built self-service tools and automation to do this. Over the past two years, we've been refining this methodology to work across a broad range of scenarios. And today, we're here to share the technology with you in the form of two open source releases, the first being Axe, a platform for adaptive experimentation, and the second being Bowtorch, a research library for advancing the state of the art in this area. Together, Axe and Bowtorch help you explore more and explore smarter. We're going to walk you through a few pivotal moments that led to the development of adaptive experimentation. Then I'll bring Kostya up on stage. In the first part, I'm going to talk about lessons that we learned from A-B testing. At Facebook, we use surveys to better understand people's needs and improve our products. But if we were to ask a random person while they're using Facebook right now if they'd like to take a survey, they wouldn't exactly be itching to respond. To improve response rates to these kinds of surveys, engineers might run A-B tests to figure out what types of prompts or images might appeal to people the most. For most product experimentation, this is where it stops. We test one or two variants, pick the best, and continue on. But what if we could test a lot more than two variants? What if we were able to test all combinations of images and prompts? In 2015, this is exactly what we did. We tested six prompts in combination with eight images and 48 variants. To say the least, the results were surprising. We were able to increase survey response rates by 250%, which if you've ever run an A-B test is a totally crazy amount. At best, we were expecting to increase this by something like 5 or 10%. Furthermore, the best variant that we found was not among those that the experts had initially considered. This highlights that one cannot rely on intuition alone. And so our takeaway from this experiment and many other follow-on experiments is that there are benefits to running many variants simultaneously. However, there's still something dissatisfying about this approach. Not all variants performed equally well. We didn't see a 200% increase for all of them. So is there some way that we could be smarter here? Imagine if we were able to start off with all of these different variants and then automatically allocate people to only the best performing variants. This is what we call adaptive experimentation. One particular method for this is banded optimization. It allocates individuals to variants with probability proportional to that variant being the best. In this figure, we see the conversion rate for an A-B test shown in pink and the banded optimization algorithm shown in blue. We can see that the A-B test doesn't change over time because it's not learning, whereas the bandit quickly hones in on the best performing content. And so unlike an A-B test, the bandit algorithm is able to automatically maximize the experimenter's objective. 
the success of these survey experiments was so great that our internal growth marketing tool decided to build tools around this. This has been used for things like campaigns to raise awareness for a blood donation feature. In this case, we used Axe to optimize the title, description, and the image. And as a result, more people are registered as blood donors. So here we've seen how machine learning could be useful for efficiently optimizing just a few discrete variants. But this doesn't really cover the entire design space. If we think about the scope of problems that we're trying to solve as a company, like figuring out how to provide the whole world with a fast and reliable experience, this problem space becomes incredibly large. For example, people access Facebook on extremely heterogeneous networks and devices. And so if we consider something as simple as loading the news feed, we see that it takes a lot longer on a 2G network than an LTE network. Engineers working to improve the responsiveness of the newsfeed in emerging markets had an interesting question. Should the number of posts we retrieve on mobile feed vary by connection quality? If we looked at the existing configurations at the time, we'd see something like this. Regardless of what kind of connection you're on, we would fetch 10 posts. The engineers wanted to personalize this configuration but had divergent hypotheses about how the number of posts to fetch should vary by connection quality. One hypothesis is that we should po retrieve fewer posts for devices with poorer connectivity. As a result, individuals might, be more might, be, might have to let wait less for po their posts to load. But you could also tell the opposite story. On poor connectivity, you have spottier network connections, and so it's useful to optimistically retrieve more posts when possible. There are a lot of different configurations you could try here. Any number between 2 and 24 is reasonable, and so if we multiply this out by the four different connection qualities, there are over 200,000 combinations. So we can no longer exhaustively test this many variants. So how do we go about this optimization problem? Let's take the simple case where we're just trying to tune the number of posts to fetch on an excellent connection. We could start off by testing a few variants between 6 and 22. And here we can see the change in the objective and the 95% confidence interval. When we do this, we find that the relationship appears quite smooth and predictable. In fact, one could imagine drawing a curve through this data. And this is just one way of saying we can model the data. Given how wide the confidence intervals are, one can formulate other models that are also compatible with the data. In fact, there are many such smooth curves that are compatible with the data. And we can call this type of uh, family of curves a Bayesian probabilistic model. And with this model, we can make more accurate predictions about configurations that we have tried, as well as about configurations that we haven't yet tested. And crucially, these Bayesian models give us a way to quantify our uncertainty. And so we know which configurations are most promising, such that we should collect more data. And so how should these Bayesian models affect the way that we experiment? Well, let's take the example of tuning two parameters. The naive thing to do would be to do a grid search like this, run the experiment, and see which regions correspond to improvements. However, with Bayesian models, we could learn virtually the same information with a much more limited number of configurations. Then we can refine this information through subsequent rounds of experiments. And by leveraging the Bayesian models to recommend new configurations, we can figure out what configurations we should be most optimistic about. This adaptive experimentation technique is called Bayesian optimization and allows us to optimize over high dimensional search spaces on a low budget. Using this method, we were able to tune four parameters. 
Ultimately, we arrived at a less intuitive result, which is that it's better to fetch more data on poor connections and less data on excellent connections. And this resulted in more responsive experiences while sim simultaneously reducing server load and data usage. Since then, we've refined this methodology and applied it to a broad range of applications, including improving relevance for the newsfeed ranking and various Instagram products, as well as improving real-time communication on Messenger, video streaming algorithms, and Facebook Live and videos. And adaptive experimentation is not just useful for products, but also for backend infrastructure and R&D. For example, adaptive experimentation powers our AutoML framework internally. And so it's used by engineers and researchers to tune machine learning models. It's also been used by physicists at Facebook Reality Labs to do research on augmented reality and virtual reality hardware. Finally, Axe has been used to improve backend infrastructure like the HHVM just-in-time compiler. So now that I've presented these different ways in which we're using adaptive experimentation technology within Facebook, I'm going to bring Kostya up on stage to talk about how you can start using the software. Hi. I'm Kostya, and I'm here to tell you about how we've built tools that, for democratizing adaptive experimentation. As you've seen, there are large gains to exploring more and exploring smarter. By exploring more, we mean going beyond A-B testing to testing dozens of variants or even considering infinite configuration spaces. By exploring smarter, we mean leveraging machine learning and probabilistic modeling to identify the most promising configurations. This process is known as adaptive experimentation. Given the value of adaptive experimentation, we asked ourselves the question, how do we turn the methodology and innovations that Aton described into self-serve tools and accessible APIs that can be used by developers like yourselves? Today, I will tell you about these open source tools and APIs that we've built through the lens of tuning infrastructure at Facebook. As you may know, Facebook is written primarily in Hack, a dialect of PHP. The Hip Hop Virtual Machine, or HHVM, compiles Hack into intermediate bytecode. At runtime, this bytecode is translated by HHVM's just-in-time compiler into Intel machine code. Ultimately, the performance of this compiler is crucial to ensuring a great product experience for our more than 2 billion users. However, as with a lot of software, there are many magic numbers and flags that determine how the just-in-time compiler works. For example, there are floats and integers that control code layout or determine which functions are inlined. Adjusting these numbers can translate into significant changes to total resource utilization or other metrics. Even taking a single float parameter, in this case a parameter that controls the handling of PHP arrays in the compiler, we see that this is a tunable number that is likely hard for humans to set, at least not without a significant amount of expertise, tedious trial and error, or both. We used Axe to tune this parameter, alongside six other parameters that control the just-in-time compiler's behavior. Here's how we set the problem up. We started by just defining the name of the experiment. Next, we define the parameter in the range of values that we want to consider, in this case, values between 0.5 and 1.0. While I'm showing you just a single parameter, we tuned all seven parameters simultaneously. Next, we set the objective, which is the metric that we will either minimize or maximize during the optimization. In this case, we wanted to minimize CPU utilization. Finally, real-world optimization, as many of you may know, almost never moves just a single number. What we quickly discovered is that some of the parameters, for example, those controlling code inlining, increase code size and thus memory usage. We therefore had to add a constraint that the optimization should not increase peak memory usage on the server beyond 0.5%. Given this setup, 
what do we do next? The optimization run itself involves just two API calls. First, our internal benchmarking tool requests a configuration from Axe to send to the compiler. This is as simple as calling the get next trial method. Axe then returns the recommended configuration using Bayesian optimization. The recommended configuration consists of a value for each of the parameters that we are tuning. For example, Axe might recommend a value of 0.7 for the mixed array threshold parameter. The compiler is then configured with these settings, and the benchmarking tool gathers data on the metrics that we want to optimize or constrain on. After the benchmarking is completed, the data is logged back to Axe via the log trial data function. This data is incorporated into our probabilistic models and in turn is used to produce the next set of configurations for us to try. This process can continue in a loop indefinitely or until the model predicts that there are no substantive improvements to be had. In this case, engineers leveraged Axe to substantially reduce CPU utilization without causing a regression in peak memory usage. Even though there were many experts working on tuning the HHVM compiler for many years, what's remarkable here is that there were still gains to be had from automated machine learning based optimization. Ultimately, Axe enabled compiler engineers to extract greater efficiency from their own product, and they did this without any specialized knowledge of machine learning. We are really excited to share this product with you today so that you can also go out and improve your own tools and infrastructure. So I've just described our API, which can be used for a broad range of applications, including A-B testing, machine learning hyperparameter optimization, hardware design, and tuning backend infrastructure. I will now describe the components of our software that allow developers to interact with the system directly, as well as build services on top of Axe. There are several features that make Axe a unique platform. First, we've developed domain agnostic representations of what configurations we are experimenting with, as well as associated metadata. Second, We've created an interface to deploy configurations and query results that works across domains and is easily extensible. And finally, we've built in ready-to-use automated optimization loops, but have also importantly preserved the flexibility for developers and researchers alike to create their own custom loops. We have also designed acts to be practical. In our experience, we found that adaptive experimentation cannot be applied as a fully automated solution by many developers right away. This is because additional understanding of the problem space is often required. To make this process easier, we developed tools and acts for modeling and visualizing experimental results and trade-offs. Our tools empower developers to move from understanding to human-in-the-loop optimization to full automation when appropriate. For some applications, however, human-in-the-loop optimization is the sweet spot, and adaptive experimentation is a form of machine learning-assisted exploration. So far, we've talked about how developers and applications can leverage Axe for product and infrastructure optimization. But what we haven't discussed at all is the underlying machine learning framework. We actually created our own research library for rapidly developing new solutions to adaptive experimentation problems. We call this library Bowtorch. We designed Axe and Bowtorch to operate a lot like our team's working style, which is to have a really short path from research to production. Both researchers and software developers can participate in this entire adaptive experimentation ecosystem. There are several characteristics that set Bowtorch apart from other Bayesian optimization packages. First, Bowtorch embraces an unframework philosophy and is explicitly designed for maximum flexibility in implementing new research ideas. Second, it's built on PyTorch, allowing researchers to both express computation using familiar constructs, such as tensors, and also to leverage deep learning modules, auto-differentiation, and GPU computation. And finally, 
Bowtorch uses GPyTorch as a state-of-the-art probabilistic modeling library. We worked in close collaboration with Cornell University and Uber AI to make GPyTorch an efficient and robust framework for cutting-edge Bayesian optimization. Taken together, these features greatly improve researcher efficiency. With that, our software is available for you to try today, and I encourage you to go out, explore more, and explore smarter. Thank you.